Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Wednesday, November 20th, 2024 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is, I recognize the power of love. Here we are. This is the final full day of Sun in Scorpio. The Sun will shift out of Scorpio into Sagittarius on Thursday right around noon pacific time so we've got like a day and a half left but here we are winding this down and I just had this big pluto shift which we're going to be experiencing this shift for a little while as we adjust to this energy i can tell you i definitely feel the air like I have definitely felt very ADD going to do one thing and doing a completely other thing and leaving it behind. Working at my friend's restaurant is so interesting because it's kind of a cafe and it's it runs different. You do everything while you're there. So today I was like making a beat, but then I just start washing dishes randomly while I'm trying to make the beat. And I'm like, wow, go back to the beat. And isn't that the way it always is? Always go back to the beat. Anyway, today, speaking of the beats, tuning into the heartbeat, we have Pluto making its first transit. And this is really interesting. So we have the moon today moving into Leo. This is interesting. It moves into Leo at 5.51 a.m. And at 5.52 a.m. it meets with Pluto. That's how far Pluto has gotten into Aquarius. It takes one minute of the moon being in Leo for it to be like, hey Pluto, how you doing? Now this is interesting because oppositions can be a force of balance, but they can also be a force of tug of war. And I feel a little tug of war between love and power here until we recognize the power of love. And then we have some synergy working. Now this tug of war flow of power is happening first thing in the morning. Watch how you wake up because you can wake up and definitely fall off the side of the bed in this kind of energy and or you can wake up and before you even open your eyes tune into the power of love tune into what you love tune into appreciation tune into joy tune into your heart tune into what is exciting you about today and empower your love empower your vibration i think this is a great first meeting for Pluto in Aquarius because I feel like this can set the tone and it can show you what you can do with your directing your mental focus with starting off the day by alchemizing using the Scorpio alchemizing your vibrational energy and you can always come back to that as well even if you fall off the bed and you're like this day doesn't feel so good you can always come back to nope let me find something let me find something to appreciate let me see where I can direct myself how I can shift my personal vibes this is the top of the cards you are worthy of flowering and you're worthy of filling like the vibes around you with just awesomeness um just like the wrap up wrap up of Pluto had a lot of energy. The wrap up of Scorpio has a lot of energy. So you may find things kind of flying at your face. Meteors <laughs> flying at your face in this energy. Um, we do have the sun and the moon connecting before the moon moves into Leo. This is in the middle of the night. You may get some interesting dreams. You may have emotions come up every once in a while. I'll be sitting there and not really even like invested in my thoughts. <laughs> I'll like find like a tear rolling down my face and I kind of feel this energy. You may find yourself processing some emotions. You may not even understand what it is. Tears or whatever is moving through you. Sometimes it comes through in laughter, even when you're processing something that's challenging. Um, all of that can be helpful. It moves the energy through. So just keep that in mind. Um, we have one more interesting, interesting transit of the day. The moon and Mars are going to meet up in the sign of Leo. Um... Moon and Mars is always an interesting connection, especially when it's in a fire sign because the moon represents our emotions and Mars represents that action. And a lot of times 
those emotions need to emote. They need motion through the body. This is happening at 2.15 Pacific time, um, 2.15 p.m. Pacific time. And between the Pluto meeting and then this, I don't know, it just feels like there might be some emotional tides. Now you may be running around being like, I love you, I love you, and feeling really silly. And that's wonderful if you tune into that. There's a lot of intense vibes, obviously, on the planet at this time. And one of the things about Aquarius is that Aquarius energy is like a, what are those things called? It's not an antenna. Satellite dish. There we go. A satellite dish. And it picks up all of the information. You're picking it up from the aliens. You're picking it up from your neighbors. You're picking it up from the people across the country. You're picking it up for people across the world. We're all tuned in. We're all connected in this web of life, right? And so when we have Aquarius activated, which it now is going to be for the next 20 years with Pluto and Aquarius, we have to recognize how tuned in we are to the satellite dish. We're all tuned in to some degree. If you have a lot of Aquarius, you might be tuned in more than somebody else who doesn't have a lot of Aquarius. But we're all tuned into the satellite dish. So you may find yourself needing to clear because you're picking up their signals. You're picking up their energies. And if you are, there's a good chance that it's vibing with something within you, but it's still a good idea to cleanse. And I'm just saying this because this moon Mars energy like I said, you could be skipping around singing joy to the world, joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea, joy to you and me. Like you definitely could be doing that, but you may find yourself temper tantruming and connecting into the fear waves and feeling even angry and upset and feeling your inner child fearing the fear waves that are out there. So be very aware. And again, you may have to emote, you may have to run some of this energy through you. I think sometimes Scorpio season is about facing the fears. And so here we are wrapping up the last day and a half. And so you may have to face some of your fears. And again, TLC to the inner child where those fears are because often that's who's afraid. And you may have to tap into your soul and your soul be like, you don't have to be afraid. God's got us, I've got us, we're okay even though there's so much going on, right? So these are the astro energies. Now I have to say, I pulled the best card, give you a little sneak peek from the Beasties Oracle. I'm gonna finish up with this. I pulled it and I was like, yes. This is the top of the cards and this is what I want you to remember, right? This queen of pentacles flowering, feeling grounded, staying grounded during Aquarius transits is gonna be helpful. Oof, the rest of the cards, including these two that came out together. Let's pull this one out. Hard times require furious dancing. You should be dancing and we always get by with a little help from our friends, right? There is some rain going on, so there is some emotional energy in here, but reach out to those who can support you and at the very least for your emoting, some interpretive dance will help. I wish I had like a DJ right here to like play a little song so I could like, you know, interpretive dance it but I just have to dance to the songs in my head which are always finding a way to play um interesting politics card in reverse be real about it that's the thing it always gets me how people are like afraid to be themselves vibrationally because they don't want to like throw things off but if you're carrying it in you you're vibrating it. And so it's better to express it. It's better whether you have to journal it, speak it to somebody. You don't have to pretend. Aquarius is never a season of pretending. It, there may be vision, and that's beautiful. And there may even be a little use your illusion. That's more Pisces, but still, we might dip into that. But it's not about pretending. It is like being wildly yourself. So keep that in mind because I think a lot of us are going to be taking off some of these masks and layers that we've put on as Pluto goes deeper into Aquarius, which I love. I'm here for that. Um, <clears throat> we definitely have a little mental rebirth. Again, you might feel a little grumpy camel. You might feel a little angry lion before you come back to your playful child self. It's okay. Move through these energies. Go read Rumi's guest house. It's such a good one. And then these two came out together. They insisted on coming out together. Past lives, which is the moon card, 
and letting go. So again, these are some emotional energies that are getting stirred up in this, in this, I don't know, in this. Let it go. Move through. But this, this past lives card, chances are there's some cords beyond this lifetime that you're processing through. And I think sometimes that awareness is helpful because sometimes like, that was minor. Why do I feel so much? Because you've experienced this in multiple lifetimes. And so it's a big thing to wrap up. This is what being human is, right? I pulled the human card from the Beasties Oracle and I was like, oh yes, I like it. And then I read just a portion of it. I was like, yes, I like it. So I'm going to read it. Stay with me. All right. Human gifts. You the infinite creative vortex of manifestation. You are a living portal through which universal ideas burst into existence. Each idea is a life force of its own and through you, it may express itself into form. Your mind is a cosmic antenna for divine creation, but it does not always tune into the cosmic broadcast. The more you calibrate your signal, the more divine creation flows through you and plays out on the channel you call life. If your antenna experiences interference or signal overload from distractions, such as resistance, fear, mainstream media, the fear waves, unhealthy habits, etc., then divine creation cannot flow through you. Positive ideas will not connect through negative frequencies. They keep moving and find other positive channels instead. Ideas are on divine timing and they will make their way into form with or without you. Bad ideas get rejected by most in tune antennas and will attempt to sneak through dissonant ones instead. You experience each idea that makes contact with you as a thought. When you're in tune and receiving good ideas from divine creativity, your thoughts are mostly positive. The clearer your reception, the more vivid the ideas that flow through you. Life feels better and better each time you help bring positive thoughts into physical form. It is a harmonious, symbiotic relationship with the source of all creation. The more good stuff you channel, the more comes your way. Every idea is a wild creature seeking expression through you. How tuned in is your antenna and what are you bringing to life? And it says, tune your antenna, align with the cosmic clock. Dance under the moonlight. There's another call for dancing. Dance under the moonlight, build fires, soak in living waters, and feel the pulse of earth under your bare feet. Celebrate the stars, hug more humans, listen to the wind, allow spirit to broadcast on your channel, harmonize with your circadian rhythm. I am really trying with that one lately. Wolf does not like my circadian rhythm. The more you sync with nature, the more you tune your antenna into divine creativity. Um, I'm going to read these last little things. Cosmic reproduction. Channeling creative ideas into the world doesn't have to be a show and tell party. It's enough to feel yourself transforming cosmic energy into form. The more you tune your channel, the more you'll notice unusual synchronicities helping you. This is momentum from the unseen world that will continue to help you in exchange for your positive contribution. Remember, it is a symbiotic relationship. So... Um, I'm going to read this part too. Did you know, just keep going, let's hang out. <laughs> Did you know the human brain exhibits neuroplasticity, neuroplasticity, meaning it can reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout life, particularly in response to creative endeavors and experiences within nature. If your antenna is wacky, damaged, or even destroyed, you can grow a fresh one. Beep, 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 beep. By simply playing with nature, build a cairn by the river or smear some dandelions on your tummy. That's a new one. <laughs> Why not? Creativity is something that you do. Do not spend time creating. Play in the moment of creation. Spending is giving something up, but in the moment you gain everything. <laughs> There's an affirmation. Let's read this. I am the portal through which positive creativity flows into the world. I am in sync with the rhythm of the natural world and my creative antenna is always in tune. That's a fantastic way to finish up this being human situation. So that's it for today. You can book a reading with me. Email me, mimiclark at gmail.com. 
and the better it gets, the better it gets. There's more than enough love in the world for you. You have the power and remember who you are for you are the solution. Namaste.